feet. <laughs> well, this is very exciting for me. It's very thrilling to me to be with people who really get it. And David Swanson is one of the people who helped us get it. And it's a great honor for me to to, present, to, uh, to uh, be the one who introduced him today. But I just want to take a few moments of pleasure <coughs> to be with all of you. Uh, every time I go to a meeting of, that, uh, of, the, of the Democratic Party, I hope Dorothy Wright isn't hearing this. <laughs> every time I go to, to a meeting of, of the, the real Democratic parties, you know, I get this terrible feeling of loneliness. <laughs> and I'm the only one, you know, maybe B, maybe Marcy Winograd, maybe Stephen Brody, who might go, or maybe, maybe Harrison Agnos, or some of the people that I know here. Um, are kind enough to also attend these meetings. Most of the time, they're too smart to attend these meetings. But it is a lonely scene. It is a lonely. But I watched this, this film on Mother's Day, which I thought was so terrific. You know, I said, well, where is Hillary Clinton in this film? <laughs> Would she agree with this? Would she understand what Mother's Day is all about? And we all know, of course, she wouldn't, being one of the major hawks in the, on the political scene. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. But first of all, I want to thank Kathleen, who is every bit as active as, uh, as I am, uh, or at least as she claims I am, and who is a real inspiration to us all. In fact, I think we should give her a little bit And as, you, as Kathleen told you, I, I host Connect the Dots on KPFK. And most hosts have at least one person that they can rely on, fall back on, really. It isn't quite a co-host, but it never is a surprise guest either. Tom Hartman has Senator Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. And John Wiener has Harold Meyerson. Well, I think I'm the luckiest of all because I have David Swanson. <laughs> I can call David a couple of hours before my show and say, David, I need a five minute rant on the Ukraine or the real US foreign policy or the Supreme Court's decision ending separation of church and state. I haven't made that call yet, but I think it's about time we did, right? And, and he will say, no problem. And, uh, and not only does he do it, but he does it brilliantly. I met David when he was press secretary for Dennis Kucinich in 2004 when Dennis ran for president. Never has there been a press secretary who was so uncompromising, so on message as David. Usually the first one to fold when it comes to sticking to the truth, is the press secretary. But not David. I don't think it occurred to him to get off message one. I don't think it ever has. His staunch positions on every issue is beyond reliable. It's inspiring. And of course, his real passion is war no more. Everything he writes, everything he says, everything he does says, War No More. That's what his books are about. War No More, The Case for Abolition, War is a Lie, When the World Outlawed War, The Military Industrial Complex of 50, I just finished that, terrific book. All great books and so many of them. How does he find time to write all that? He hosts a radio show called Talk Nation Radio, he helped to co-plan, I know we're not supposed to say lead uh, when it comes to the occupation movement, but just in this room, he was a leader in the occupation movement. Um, he, he blogs constantly for rootsaction.org and worldbeyondwar.org. He works as Secretary for Peace in the Green Shadow Cabinet while being a new father and, I'm told, a great husband. There is no end to David Swanson's talent, his energy, his commitment to justice and peace. David's world is the world we're all striving for. And in honor of David, 
I have written a little ode to that world. And it goes like this. David's world is what we work for. He tell no lies that lead us to war. No drones or sanctions to prove we can score. In David's world, there'd be war no more. Fear would not rule. Fear tears us apart. Justice and peace would be state of the art. No NSA, CIA, or TPP would threaten to stop us from being free. We the people would choose who should lead, not one percenters with their gothic greed. The war economy would at last end, the world would collect correctly see us as a friend. And when the war economy ceased to exist, the positive changes are such a long list. If David were president, but wait just a minute, how could he change things with this Congress today? <laughs> this same slimy Congress that's bought and paid for. It's hard to find one who's not a war whore. <laughs> and the Supreme Court kills, uh, and as the Supreme Court kills our Constitution, the executive branch is sure no solution. And how can the Senate claim their seniority when they don't even know 51 is a majority. Uh -huh. <laughs> Time to look elsewhere to leaders who dare, fearless heroes who know all and care. Leaders to pull us out of this mire, leaders whose truth-telling lights up our fire. Leaders who helps us stay in the game. There's one here tonight, and you know his name. Put your hands together and send up a cheer David Swanson, our mentor, come on up here. <laughs> Kucinich's name has come up four or five times. He's likely to get here in a couple of hours. If you stick around, he's going to send me a text message. So if I'm looking at my phone in the middle of my own speech, uh, that's why. Um, the, uh, uh, thank you, thank you to everybody who's here. I know half of you and can say great things about you, as Lila just did about me. We don't have time uh, for everybody. Um, I want to mention that a new friend of mine uh, named Joe White from Santa Barbara, who has a project called A Year Without War, uh, gave me a ride here. And stand up or raise your hand. Hello. And uh, you guys should uh, check out A Year Without War and invite him to come and speak here. Um, also, there's a festival some of you may have heard of called United We Stand Festival, uh, which has been uh, disunited, we organize, uh, but the, the festival has been moved this evening to the Belasco Theater, which is a dozen blocks from here, northeast of here, um, on, on Hill Street and 11th, I believe, right. and it's at 5 o'clock. Um, Dennis and many other people you might want to hear will be speaking there at 5 o'clock, and it's free. Um, Thank you very, very much to Pat Alviso for setting this up, even though she couldn't be here, um, and to all of the other people and organizations who set this up. Um, thank you to Lila Garrett for doing twice what I do at twice my age and inspiring the rest of us uh, to continue and having the best radio show in the country. Um, thank you to my friend and Lila's uh, and many of yours who we just lost, Tim Carpenter, mm -hmm. for whom there's a memorial happening right now in Massachusetts. Um, he will be very badly missed. Um, uh, a 
friend of many of ours, Pat Elder, with Nomi, which has been mentioned a number of times, uh, will be speaking later this month at the memorial in Washington for John Judge, whom we also just lost, and I want to remember him as well as Tim.